Hello everyone, Elite Cameraman here, episode 76. Part 1 finally arrived and it felt like an actual unhinged war has been going on ever since the events of episode 74. This episode also shows us a lot more of the new companionship that was formed between the Toilets and the Alliance in a very chaotic manner. But that's not all because most of you would think that this episode probably didn't have much that was important for the lore. And that's where you'd be mistaken because we are slowly learning more about the Astros. It feels like we are getting closer to learn about their actual origins, which I'll talk about later in the video. But more importantly, the fricking chair is back as we saw in the leaks. And it's weird. Really, really weird. I think the chair glazers will win the fight against the non-chair believers because this episode literally shows that we were right. And there is no way people can deny us now. It also feels like an episode that we'd see Secret Agent in, but so far, I haven't been able to see him after watching it like 10 times and going frame by frame. If he does appear and I do catch him somewhere, I'll make sure to showcase it in the video. There is also the fact that this episode right now is only a part one, and it's already three minutes long, and it's the episode before the most awaited episode 77. People already know that something big will happen in episode 77 because so far some of the biggest events have happened on episode 47, 57, and 67. While also Boom did say himself that he was hyped for episode 77, so it's likely that the full version of episode 66 will be the lead-up to Titan Cameraman's fate, which we'll see in episode 77. Also, I actually got food poisoning a couple days ago, and even though overall my health is back to normal, my body still feels tired, so if today's script sounds a little goofy, sometimes please excuse me for it. If I do miss anything, I'll make sure to make a second video on it in a couple days, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to not miss it. Anyways, here we go. The episode starts with a scene we actually have never seen before. We see toilets shooting rockets and lasers, but this attack force is actually crazy. We even got the upgraded Ding Dong Long Leg Strider. It's crazy because even with this much firepower, they barely break one of his laser cannons and some of his shields, and the thing that kills the Astro Blood is one of the goofiest toilets I've ever seen. Because of the Skibidi Toilet's distracting attacks, the Astro stops caring about his surroundings, and out of nowhere a goddamn Superman Toilet shows up to explode inside him to kill the Astro. Yes, you heard me right, a Superman Toilet. If you look carefully, Blood literally has the face of Superman and his toilet being purple makes it feel like a Joker reference. If you watch carefully, you'll see that this toilet was definitely a toxic bomb and maybe Blood had the Joker's laughing gas. Because Blood went crazy after he was attacked and died after crashing down when the toilets attacked him right on the head. Also, does this mean that Superman existed in the Skibidi Toilet universe or maybe it was a universe where Clark Kent existed as a human on Earth? But that's not the important thing. I think this episode showed us something very important. Something that we've been being teased a lot in almost every fight against the Astros, and maybe the key to their weakness. I think I have a great theory about this, and I'll talk about it later in the video. But for now, let me just explain what it's overall about. If you go back to the beginning, when the toilets attack the Astro Toilet, we see that the Astro Toilet gets really agitated, and he actually loses all focus. We know that Astros are technologically more advanced, and because of the speeds they are going at, they definitely have crazy sharp senses. But why didn't the Astro Toilet realize the toxic Superman Toilet was on his way to him? Things are not making sense, but once you hear my theory, I think it'll make more sense because everything we've seen so far is pointing to the same conclusion. After this scene, we see another Astro interrupting the Skibidi Toilets, and he instantly says, How dare you resist, traitor scum! with a furious voice. Here you go, listen to it yourself. This seems like a very average dialogue, but it has a very deep meaning. The fact that he is telling this to the normal toilets shows how much hate he has for the Skibidi toilets. He doesn't just call them traitors, but adds the scum as well. They at least acknowledged G-Man Toilet as if he was and used to be one of them. But for these normal toilets, they don't even see them as things that should be resisting, and he kills them as if they weren't even supposed to even exist in the first place. This deep hatred towards the toilets is actually insane, and as we see more and more footage of Astros fighting, it feels like it's not that their senses are sharp in a sense of speed, but in every possible way, as in feelings as well. 
I'll talk a lot more about this later in the analysis because it's a pretty big topic, but I genuinely think this might become their biggest weakness, and maybe G-Man knows this too because he also is the same. After the Astro kills probably all the toilets that we saw in the beginning, the POV instantly turns back and starts running alongside of two other cameramen, but the destruction we see is crazy. The place is filled with toilet bodies and maybe even Alliance members' bodies which we can't see. While running, the cameraman looks at his right to see one of the craziest ding-dong long-leg toilets with a laser mounted inside his mouth, while planes are flying to most likely bomb the Astro toilets on top of it. The POV cameraman enters a small warehouse to hide while all the explosions are going on, and while he is running we can see a camera copter crashing down as usual in the background. But suddenly, a toilet with a bunch of broken parts shows up in front of them, and Blood looks scared and just stares at the POV as if someone said English or Spanish to him while the POV pulls out two rocket launchers. This POV is unhinged, bro. But I think what happened here and what'll happen in a few moments show us that the squad we've been watching from the beginning wasn't aware of the team up between the toilets, and this toilet looks more shocked about the fact that the cameraman pulled the rocket launchers instead of helping him. Which means, the team up here has been going for some time, just not enough for everyone in the area to know. Also, this squad is not a reinforcement squad, which we know from this large cameraman having two rocket launchers instead of one big laser gun and no jetpacks. So, maybe the Alliance members who has been out in the wild for a while have no idea what's going on. It's even possible that they already lost their tablets and have been stuck in the city for a while. This gets more clear with what happens later in the episode, after the toilet looks in a very sad way. He suddenly gets rammed by an Astro toilet going light speeds. And not only that, but this Astro literally has a mask that he can control. After blocking the rockets, Blood opens his mask back on before he shoots the POV cameraman with his lasers. But why does he look so moisty? Yes, I know it's raining and all the other toilets are like this too, but still, bro, this one has a different shine on it for sure. This Astro toilet suddenly gets murked by a huge Skibidi toilet that looks like an old tank. And when this tank toilet backs up, the POV cameraman looks up and instantly pulls up his rocket launchers. But before he can even shoot, the cameraman next to him beats him to it and uses the stun gun on it, and literally English or Spanishes the toilet into not moving a single inch. Bro's facial expression even looks like the guy from the videos. I don't know if Boom did this intentionally, but either way it's so goofy. I would say whoever doesn't like and subscribe is a TV woman simp, but we all know we all are. Anyways, after the stun gun attack, two reinforcement cameramen with actual upgrades show up from inside the toilet looking confused and making hand signs to say stop and that they are teaming with them. This definitely proves that only the newly deployed reinforcement squads knows about the team ups, but not the old squads. This might actually lead to some confusion on some different areas as well because it looks like the toilets are pretty well informed about this right now. But if they all are, this would leave some questions in my mind too because we don't know how they communicate with their peers outside of direct conversations. Unless there is a way to broadcast it to all Skibidi toilets' minds, I doubt every single toilet knows about the current team-up situation just like how some cameraman don't know. After the toilet and the cameraman inside it leave, we see one of the most mysterious scenes in this episode, or maybe even the series. First we see the POV cameraman look at the cameraman to his right to see his reaction on what just happened, and just as he is confused, the cameraman is confused too, and just shrugs. But they decide to continue on their journey, which leads to them turning to the left, where we see something insane. While they are turning and moving forward, we can see a bunch of cameramen running for their lives and some dead on the floor and even one with a wheelchair. At first it seems like the toilets are chasing the cameraman, but it's actually the Astro toilets chasing both the toilets and the cameraman. And we can even see a cameraman that's holding on to a toilet hanging for his life. And at the beginning of this scene we see the goofy ah cameraman that got yeeted, which we also saw in the leaks earlier this week. But these were not the important things about this scene. There are actually two objects, two weird objects that we see here that are very interesting for a very particular reason. The first one, you can probably guess, we once again see a chair but don't be fooled. 
This time, it's actually a different chair compared to the one in episode 75 because its shape is completely different. But there is definitely something up with this chair because it moves by itself in a very unconventional way. I know some people will call this wind and all that, but there is just no way. There is zero chance Boom is going his far to troll us, bro. The chair definitely has something to it. As far as I know, the chair does not teleport this episode like it did in episode 75, but the way it moves as if it was trying to hide and panicked is crazy to me. But that's not all because we have a new object. We don't know anything about this object and I might be waffling, but before we even see the chair, if you focus and zoom in on the right side of the road, we can see some sort of a plant just moving in a straight line on a flat surface with no wheels, no wind, no force, simply moving. It stops right after, but isn't this weird, weird objects just moving on their own? Is someone making these objects move from far away as if they are using the force? Or do these objects are not objects at all, but shapeshifters turning into objects to spy on the war that's going on? The possibilities are endless, but if this plant thing wasn't an error and if it actually happened, this would mean that. Now we not only should be looking at the chairs, but literally every object that just moves on its own. And weirdly enough, we do get a better look at this plant later in the episode, which I'll show you when we get there, so stay tuned. After we see these objects, the POV cameraman pulls up his rocket launcher to attack one of the Astro troops, and from the looks of it, these small Astros with closable helmets are like the normal troops for Astros, because it's exactly the same as the last one we saw. But even these Astros are incredibly durable. Since this Astro was distracted, the rocket actually does a bit of damage, but with both the stun rays and rockets coming at him at the same time, he gets stunned just like how any normal skibidi toilet would, which leads to the POV cameraman breaking the Astro's helmet to remove his protection and stabs his head before stealing his laser gun. But this reveals us something even more strange, which are the tattoos on his head. But before that, look at this laser the large cameraman stole. This thing looks super high-tech and is definitely some extraterrestrial technology, just like what we thought. The Alliance is definitely stealing this tech and putting it in the lab as soon as possible to study it and learn from it to improve their own technology. I think we all know that with the Alliance's current state, they have no chance of winning against the Astros even with the toilets. They definitely need to improve their technologies and all the equipment they use. I feel like with this Astro tech we are getting our hands on, we might get to see some crazy Titan upgrades in the future. I don't know how they'll look like, but I'm 100% sure they'll be crazy. And also I talked about the durability of the Astros because how did this blood get up seconds after being stabbed in the head like that as if nothing happened? It decides to back off a little to charge up and ram onto the POV cameraman, but it feels like he either has lost some power due to all the damage that's been done or the large cameraman actually shot the laser just a millisecond before the Astro hit him because he wasn't able to kill the POV cameraman, even though I think we all know he should have if the Astro were able to hit the large cameraman with full power. But even this does not stop him because he suddenly gets on top of the large cameraman and says, time to die very slowly, just like how it was said in the ending of the first Blade Runner movie. But what about the symbols on his head? Here we can see a weird downwards triangle, and earlier when the POV cameraman was stabbing him, we could see a circle with an X mark on the side of his forehead. What do these mean? Many people do think that these are a sign for their ranks, markings they were given by the Astros. It's not clear if all Astros have these since I don't think we've seen markings on G-Man toilet nor any other Astro toilet we know yet, but it definitely sound possible. It's also possible that only lower rank Astros have this because with how they called G-Man Toilet Commander, it's clear that a military-like system is ran through the whole Astro race. I think after we see one more or a couple more of these symbols, we can definitely figure out their meaning, but so far we only got the first piece of the puzzle. But now it's time to talk about one of the most important things that was literally shoved into our faces about Astros in today's episode. Right before this Astro gets shot by a laser, you can literally see him move his eye and react to it, but he doesn't move. Just like how the first Astro toilet in today's episode died to the toxic Superman toilet. Why is this? I think the Astros actually have enhanced senses, but as I said earlier in the analysis, this doesn't end with enhanced hearing, speed, reflexes, but also extends to their feelings as well. The way they feel sadness, pride, hate, annoyance, and every feeling you can think of most likely enhanced as well. 
because the way they are acting sometimes is even more immature than the Skibidi toilets. They get distracted very easily, and even though they have the capabilities to react to it because of their extreme sense of hate towards the thing they were distracted by and their extreme sense of murder intent, it seems like they freeze and get killed. I don't know if this is true, but we saw something similar in episode 75, too. We literally saw the juggernaut Astro almost cry for a second when he saw the puppy Astro dead, and he went from sad to literally shaking the ground by just shouting because of his anger just like that. But because he was distracted by his emotions and the fact that his child was killed, he missed the opportunity to take revenge on the squad that killed him right there. I don't think normal toilets have this kind of senses, because from what we've seen, other than G-Man and Scientist Toilet, there wasn't really any toilets that we've seen who seemed like that could feel like this. G-Man Toilet definitely fits this category, because even when TV Woman was controlling Scientist Toilet's body in episode 73, he was hesitant to fight him at first because he felt sad. We literally see this with G-Man in almost any episode or used to, because it seems like he is actually improving on this issue and is being calmer in his fights overall. But back in the day, Bro would snap out of it because of the smallest things and would go crazy. I don't know what you guys think, but even if Boom wasn't intentionally doing this, it feels like it fits everything that's been going on. Also, going back to the topic of the Astro Troop, his toilet setup looks awfully like the plunger cameraman's glitch toilet setup, with the X-Wings and all that. Was the glitch toilet an experiment by the scientist toilet to replicate the Astro Toilet's space warping technology and speed? Seeing this, it seems very possible with all the info we have right now. But even with all that power, this Astro gets obliterated as well. And when he does, we see something on the right side. Something that I mentioned earlier. A plant. A mini palm tree on the side of the road in a city which is God knows how far away from the beach. What is it doing here? Why was it moving earlier? There is definitely something fishy going on here and I'm sure we'll solve it soon. Also, when this Astro Troop's head was blown up instead of blood metal particles and spark came out of it, even though we did see there was definitely some blood when he was being stabbed in the head earlier. I don't know what this means, but it does make it seem like they are half robotic, half flesh, or maybe just the lower ranking Astros are. After the Astro dies, POV turns to his left and is greeted by the reinforcement large cameraman who came to save him. And suddenly, normal Astro Troop starts showing up out of nowhere, which the laser large cameraman uses literally one shots them with. But after the first one, five Astro Troops show up at the same time, and we see some new Alliance tech. I did guess that the object the large cameraman had on his arm was a plasma shield in my leaks video, but I did not expect it to be deployable to turn into a big shield. And this shield can actually endure against the Astro Troop attacks, which means if we can kill them easily with reinforced equipment and defend against it, it means that we can at least fight against the low rank troops pretty easily if everyone is prepared well. But this small victory doesn't last long because a strider like Astro shows up out of nowhere and one shots the plasma shield with one simple laser blast, leaving the large cameramen out in the open. That leads to the upgraded Strider camera literally drifting into the scene as cool as possible and shoots the Astros. It's unclear if the Strider-like Astro was killed at first because it went off screen, but after the Strider camera kills of the last two Astro troops, he turns to his right to charge up his laser and finish off the Strider Astro, showing who the superior Strider is. It's also very possible that this Strider camera is the same one from Episode 72 Part 1, because at the end of the full version of episode 72, we did see the scientist cameraman finding the destroyed Strider camera and give him a thumbs up. I guess this was foreshadowing the fact that he'd actually fix and upgrade it to use it as his new mech because the last one was destroyed. I honestly didn't see this one coming and props to boom, it's such a cool idea. And right before the end, we see the reveal of the scientist toilet being the controller of the Strider and he gives us a thumbs up ending the episode. Don't forget this was just part one, and with how the last two episodes been, I think the upcoming episodes will keep getting crazier, and over time the team up between the toilets and Alliance will get stronger, so if you don't want to miss out on anything, make sure to like and subscribe.